Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. And this time we've got a long-term review of my bench multimeter, the East Tester ET3240. I got this last year, got it from Banggood. It took about a week and a half to come, so quite a quick delivery really. Um, and it's spent since then in the lab and I've used it pretty much every time I've been here when I wanted to make measurements, current, voltage, uh, resistance, capacitance, etc. And um, it's acquitted itself well as far as I'm concerned, but I thought what I'd do is I'd try and complement the two videos that I can find which are already on YouTube about this meter. Um, the first one is from Steve at SDG Electronics and he reviews this meter and also the next model up and uh, makes I think some very um, reasonable comments about them. He's impressed with the accuracy, as am I, and the, I think the criticism he'd certainly got of this model is this slightly weird 100 milliamp um, current setting and the next one is 10 amps and uh, I think Steve actually said on his video that uh, it'll catch you out that 100 milliamps he's absolutely right it's caught me out once I've had to replace the fuse just once and that's probably why they send you several of them with with the instrument uh, but the trick is just to use the 10 amp range initially and then if you want some accuracy between up to 100 milliamps you can use the other one later so I guess it's um, perhaps could have been thought through better but uh, as long as you adjust how you're operating it it's not really a great big issue uh, and I'm going to have a look at some of the um, measurements and what I'm not going to do is repeat work that's already been done by others because um, there's just no point in that but I will have a look at one or two of the other bits that um, perhaps weren't covered in quite so much detail so Steve's video I'll put a link up there to it definitely worth a watch and there's also another video um, by uh, Mads Tech uh, and he also does a very good review Steve's review incidentally was in April 2020 Mads Tech review is in October uh, 2020 and uh, on Mad's Tech video, which I'll put a link there for you to watch, uh, I'd really would encourage you to have a look. And he, he's got some bodge wires on his main board. Um, so I've uh, had my instrument to bits and had a look. Um, so here's a picture of the main board. And there's certainly no bodge wires on mine in the same area. It was the area marked there. I think the other plus side as well is um, my fuse uh, down there on the left is not soldered in it's actually uh, clipping and out so that's uh, positive but I noticed that um, the Mad Tech's board issue appears to be version 0.06 whereas my board version is 0.08 that you can see there so I guess it's tempting to think well maybe they've sorted those issues out which is great well done East Tester except that um, on Steve's STG Electronics video although it's not quite so easy to see he appears to have a version uh, 0.06 board as well and there's no bodge wires on that so hey -o, um, who understands it right let's have a look at some of the um, measurements that I don't think were covered on the other videos in quite so much detail and uh, see how she fares first thing I'm going to look at then is the East Tester's ability to measure uh, AC RMS voltage. So I've got a, a transformer power supply actually uh, which produces around about 20 odd volts uh, AC. Uh, so it's a, a just a handy source at obviously at about 50 Hertz here in the UK. So I've got the scope attached here. I've got it measuring peak to peak and RMS and I've got the meter set to AC volts. I've also started the stats here and I've got uh, stats running on the scope as well. And I started them roughly at the same time so currently this is sampled about 270 times and this is sampled about 212 times. So the um, meter is saying the average is 22.53 and the scope reckons that the uh, average is 22.83 so there's about a 0.3 volt discrepancy there in the uh, RMS calculation. Now I've got the peak to peak on here as well. I'll actually just quickly take a, a screen grab of that to show you. There it is. And um, 
so the, the scope itself is relatively new I've still got a current calibration certificate for it so I suppose arguably it's the scope that's that's more accurate but we're within um, 0.3 volts which um, for me is perfectly adequate uh, the scope makes the um, standard deviation uh, on 300 measurements about 13 and a half millivolts whereas the instrument makes the standard deviation about 14 uh, millivolts on um, 400 measurements so um, reasonably uh, close I would say so that's AC performance next we're going to look at, um, at frequency now we'll have a look at frequency and to start off I've got the signal generator attached to the meters input and I've also got uh, the scope attached as well uh, as, and I've got stats set up for RMS period and frequency. I uh, just wanted to show you uh, this which I think is um, quite interesting. Uh, the, inst the meter is telling me about 1.68 volts at 2 hertz, that is correct, I have got the generator at 2 hertz and the scope um, reckons yes it's 2 hertz and it also reckons the RMS is about, about 1.62 something like that. Um, so I think that's pretty impressive uh, it being able to get that close on such a, a low frequency. So we'll um, advance the frequency to a staggering 10 hertz and um, give the scope a chance to catch up. Um, and the scope's now saying 1.71 volts RMS, the meter saying 1.76 at 10 hertz. So it's actually uh, not bad at all for such a, such a low frequency. So I'm now going to put the instrument into frequency mode and as you can see there it's saying exactly 10 Hertz again signal generator has got a current certificate of calibration so it would suggest the outputs pretty accurate um, so what we'll now do is we'll advance by an order of magnitude to 100 Hertz there and again the meters keeping up it's absolutely bang on the scope agrees it's 100 Hertz uh, so we'll uh, go up another order of magnitude to one kilohertz and one kilohertz surprise surprise the instrument is uh, more than happy to give you apparently four decimal places of accuracy there I don't know how true that actually is but that's still nonetheless um, absolutely um, spot on so we'll go up another order of magnitude to 10 kilohertz so there's 10 kilohertz and again meters keeping up scope agrees that we're at 10 kilohertz so we'll continue again right up to uh, 100 kilohertz and again the instrument no complaints at all um, so we'll do yet another order of magnitude and now we're at 1 megahertz again agrees completely and he's measuring the frequency rather well so now we'll go up to 10 megahertz which is there and remember of course that um, the notice the waveform isn't quite so much a sine wave as it used to be I think that's probably got um, something to do with the amount of volts that I'm um, putting out actually uh, oh it's not terminated that's why apologies um, don't worry too much about the shape of the waveform so 10 megahertz yeah all good 10 megahertz on here and I'm just going to go up now in one megahertz steps so there's 15 again absolutely spot on 15 and the instrument uh, says it will do 20 megahertz and as you can see absolutely spot on 20 megahertz there um, if we try and take it to 21 megahertz it's not prepared to play anymore um, so yeah certainly does it and if we go back down to 10 megahertz and just convince ourselves of the accuracy of that display uh, yep I'm advancing there by um, 100 hertz steps and in sure enough um, it's keeping up exactly I think that's a pretty impressive performance for frequency so if you've not got a scope 
um, or a frequency counter but you want the ability to, to measure frequencies up to 20 megahertz it's more than capable of it and I think does it rather well bear in mind of course none of the leads um, to the instrument are, are screened so I think it's doing extremely well to do that okay now we'll look at duty cycle I've got the signal generator producing pulses as you can see here obviously for duty cycle we need the pulses to be always going uh, positive which which they are and I'm just going to step up in uh, currently the generator says that's 10% duty cycle you can see 8.3 there uh, so I'll just step up in units of 10 so that's 20 on the generator 30 40 50 60 70 80 and 90% duty cycle and I think uh, that's pretty good really if you're somebody who's into your electric motors and you want to um, check what the output of your pulse width modulation controller is um, I think the instrument's um, certainly capable of doing that okay well there you go um, I actually think that um, it's a nice meter I'm very pleased with it um, it's not going anywhere uh, certainly does the the job as far as I'm concerned I'm not after super accuracy here I'm just a, a, a very much an amateur hobbyist uh, just trying to uh, do a bit of self-training in, in electronics etc so yeah works absolutely fine for me and I would certainly um, uh, recommend them uh, no problem at all definitely encourage you to watch Mad Tech's video and also um, Steve STG Electronics video there's links um, earlier on in the video to those two and I'll also put uh, those links in the description for this video um, so definitely have a look and see what you think but I'm pleased with mine hope that's been useful if it has please click the thumbs up um, be great if you could consider subscribing if you haven't done already please let other people know about the channel be great if I could get the subscribers numbers up a little bit more thanks to those that give me encouraging feedback when I started the channel back um, in July last year it was just uh, a bit of fun in the middle of lockdown and I've sort of begun to enjoy it and I would never have dreamt that it would have gone on as long as it has so uh, it's really only going on as long as it has because you've been encouraging me so please keep encouraging me comments are always welcome and hopefully uh, you've learned something I know I certainly have I'll see you on the next video